Hi, this is Paul calling here, and I want to do, to do a video about what it's like to have a, an aerophone after about six months. Uh, in my music videos, each one I've tried to address a certain challenge, whether it be vibrato issues, harmonies, simple things like pizzicato. Now, having had a fair amount of experience with it, but there are things that you may want to you know, think about or, or get even before you open the box. First and foremost, the neck strap. And uh, finding one that's comfortable and works for you uh, in the way that you play. It's not a light instrument and you definitely need a neck strap. You can't get a really, it's very difficult to get away without it. The other thing that you're going to need NICAD batteries. The flip side of it too is that you need a, a charger. If you want to Play without the power cord, you got to buy your NICADs and you need a battery charger for it. Another thing that is really helpful to have uh, is an instrument stand. Now, these keys are, are kind of delicate. Um, they are made to be played a lot, but how you put things down and where you leave your instrument that uh, I really find you know helpful. Another thing that you're going to need is a, uh, a USB thumb drive. And what you will need one, it has uh, both the, 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 the normal old fashioned style and uh, one that has for the, uh, the size USB-C, I think it's called, that fits into the instrument. Uh, you need this to back up your instrument and you do need to back up your instrument. I wish I was better about it. Some smaller things that you may want to also have to protect your mouthpiece, which they're expensive to replace, is to get little foam pads that you know the saxophone players have to put on top of um, your mouthpiece. It'll protect your mouthpiece and extend its life, you know, quite a bit. Now, there's some things that I do that are probably you know unique to me. I don't like the, the small amount of air leakage, and so I'll wrap. You know, around uh, my mouthpiece with Teflon, you know, tape, you know, plumber's tape. So I want to talk about the performance keys. A lot of people have opinions about how they should be. I'll say as an overview, the performance keys are engineered to satisfy a wide variety of needs. And whether people complain about, you know, the clicking sound or underneath position of the thumb key that uh, it goes off accidentally or they can't seem to uh, uh, control it properly. When you come from another instrument, they will have, especially a, a, so like a, a saxophone, they have alternate fingerings. I actually came from using uh, the Yamaha you know, WX5. They programmed in a large number of alternate fingerings. So the ability to uh, program your keys. I find it, it it's you know very important, and in fact, uh, it would be unplayable if you couldn't really uh, get the alternate keys you know, in position. Another issue that comes up a lot is position, you know, of the thumb key. You know, you have to come with a decision how you want them to be. My performance keys to control the vibrato. In harmony. If you want to use your instrument beyond, let's say, what you would expect a saxophone, you know, be able to play one note at a time, or how you want to control your vibrato, pizzicato, you, know, you may not, the way they come standard with the, you know, S1, S2 keys, they put pizzicato up there. I put it on the thumb key. I, I find it, I can't get it fast enough to come in and out as needed. So I program my thumb key to be pizzicato. I use a side key here for uh, activating harmony. And each one of these things, and there's other ideas that I have too, to try and get more functionality out of the instrument you know, while I'm playing. You know, it's really a blank slate. And I, I think the, it's a great compromise as to what Roland has provided with performance keys. Another issue I want to address is, I'll call it the quality of the sounds. I like to specialize more in the natural sounds. And people say, well, that doesn't sound like a violin to me, or something you know, very common. 
first of all, I don't know what a, a violin sounds like. You know, there are many videos on YouTube, for example, that show trying out a violin, you know, compare this violin to a Stradivarius, and can you tell the difference between, you know, a Guarnari and, um, you know, something that was more recently made? It's very hard to hear the differences, but a lot has to do with how the player is able to evoke different colors and shades of the sound. So there is no such thing as one violin sound or flute sound or anything else. It, it, it's, a, it's a wide palette of sounds. It isn't just so much the sound that is that you hear on continuous. It's like when you press down an organ key and as long as the sound, you have the, your finger down, that's the sound you hear. But a lot of what the sound really you know, is it, it, that, that makes you really want to listen to it is how the player makes the sound start, how the player makes the sound stop, what volume level, how they control their vibrato. There's an expression modifier that you can tie to volume. And it, these are all things that as, as you play and change, it isn't that it doesn't sound like a violin, just a violin player doesn't always have the same sound quality, same timbre, you know, throughout their playing. Their articulation will be different. Um, their volumes change, you know, quite a bit. I think the sounds, the natural sounds, are, are quite adequate. They're, they're very good. The important thing is how do you approach every note and how you attack it and what you do with it once you have it. And this is just no different than a real instrument. If you were really playing a violin, if you feel that you're not getting the most out of it, don't just blame it you know, on the digital sound. It may be that you could do more to kind of bring out the expressiveness of it. You know, having the instrument now for about six months and have produced a number of music videos, I find that you know, the instrument has so many capabilities. The Rowan Area Phone is a well-designed instrument with all kinds of features that will allow you to meet current needs that you may feel that you want to bring to the instrument. But you're going to see that there are capabilities that are for ideas, needs that you haven't even thought about yet. So keep an open mind and, and keep playing.